on today's episode. I've often fancied the idea of powering a model with a, an EDF fan unit, and recently I spotted this one, and Banggood have been kind enough to send me one for evaluation, which is cool. Uh, the specification of this unit is, I'm not sure if you can see it in the moulding here, it's a 50mm fan, uh, 11 blades, and the power unit is a 4900kV motor suitable for three cells. That's pretty ideal as that's one of the types of cells that I normally fly with. Before I get uh, all carried away and excited about just slapping this on to, uh, to a model, which many people seem to do, I thought I would evaluate the thrust on my little thrust rig and uh, there's links to uh, how I made this in an earlier video. So let's uh, install it into the test rig and spin it up, see what sort of thrust figures and what sort of current draw we will be seeing. With the EDF fan now installed into the test rig, I'm powering it with the Hack RC 35 amp uh, ESC, my faithful Maplin servo tester. And this watt meter um, is especially useful because it will record the peak current and the peak power. So the only thing I have to keep an eye on is the amount of grams thrust indicated and then I can go back and look on the meter here to see the power. And with those two numbers we can make a stab at, um, at the, the, the efficiency. So I'm going to take two readings. The first reading will be around 50% throttle and the second readings will be around 100% throttle. We have a freshly charged battery here, so let's connect that up. So at 50% I made that about 190 grams, I shall wind it back on the on the camera. The maximum current 7.33 amps and 89.8 .8 watts. Let's go now for our 100%. And I made that around 390 grams, which gives us 22.07 amps and 254.6 watts. So let's crunch those numbers. So the results are in, and at the 50% throttle mark, we end up with a figure of 2.116 at 100% that drops down to 1.532 and I did another test at around 25% throttle and got to 2.46 so clearly this is happier at uh, lower throttle settings this is not exactly a surprise EDFs are renowned for their inefficiency however there are other factors to be considered as I said, over the years I've done a lot of reading about um, EDFs. Two things that have been stated to be very important. One is the design of the inlet, the shape of that. And the second is how the exhaust or the thrust is controlled. And here it's not controlled at all. The air that's coming off the back of the fan will be swirling around and going all over the place. What's needed is a thrust tube. Let's check out that idea back on the computer. When looking for a solution to the thrust tube, I came across this design on Thingiverse. Now it's for a different type of, of fan, but what intrigued me was the description, which is quite thorough. It explains how he comes up with the dimensions of the tube, the inlet and the outlet and the length. And what he does is to reference another thread, which I found, and as always, links in the description to these things. Now this is quite an old thread, back to 2012, but it's concise and pretty much to the point. What we need to know is the length of the tube, and here it says tube length four times the diameter. So that makes life easy for us, so it'll be 200 millimeters long. The inlet diameter is also fairly 
simple because that's just the size of the fan, so that will be 50 millimeters. Here it talks about the reduction in size at the exit for best, uh, best results, somewhere between 5 and 16 percent. So if we go for the middle ground, say around 8 percent, that gives us a figure of 46 millimeters for the exit hole. So all we need is a tube 200 millimeters long, 50 at the beginning and 46 at the end, and we're good to go. Where would we find such a thing? Here is our tube. Now it's not 200 millimeters long because the fan starts at this part of the, or the, the center of the fan is around here, and this is about 25 millimeters. So this is 175 millimeters long, and I adapted the measurement of uh, the inlet to match this part of the motor here. I've also added a hole so that it can pass the ESC wires through. I have seen some designs where they hang the ESC in the airflow. Uh, obviously that's going to give good cooling, but uh, I think it goes against uh, what we're trying to do into smoothing that airflow out. So I'm going to have to desolder this and pass those wires through. Here we can see in concept what it's going to look like. And there's our exit hole at 46 millimeters. So I'll get that soldered together. I'm just going to uh, roughly tape this together to do the test. Depending on what the results are is whether this is actually going to be useful to us or, or not. Set up now with the tube installed. As I said, just uh, just taped on there. I've also put some hot melt glue in the uh, hole where the cables come out. Make sure there's no air passing through that. Uh, recharge the battery, so we're good to go. We'll go 25 percent, 50, and 100. So I made that 74. 2.7 amps and 33.6 watts. Now going to 50%. So 172 there. 7.4 amps and 90.1 watts. Now let's go for broke. Three hundred and forty-three, I think I saw there. Twenty point eight amps, two hundred and thirty-nine point one watts. So let's crunch those numbers and uh, see how it compares. The results from the thrust tube test. Uh, these were the previous readings at the same sort of throttle settings. At the lower throttle settings, we seem to be getting uh, more more thrust there. Um, but there's a drop in the efficiency. Uh, the numbers at 50% and at 100% are within the same sort of ballpark. But what this doesn't illustrate, maybe you saw my, uh, my servo tester nearly disappear off the bench, is that obviously now with the thrust more focused, I believe it's a, going to be a much better and smoother airflow and the performance in, in the air is going to be the thing that, that uh, will tell us. So I guess uh, I'll have to find a, a suitable airframe and uh, see if we can fly this thing. Or maybe I shall find an unsuitable airframe. Hmm.